don't know if it's real. You know, at least I know she got my back, you know, to the grave. So I mm-hmm. know she's with me and she knows I'm with her. Mm-hmm. And that's just, you know, everything's not perfect. You know, marriage is work. And that's marriage is work. But I'm not here. Me, Go ahead, sorry. I'm not gonna be here like, you know, everything is wrong. Mm-hmm. You have to work hard, you know, to stay married, you know, and stay together. You know what I'm saying? There are times when I'm like, wow, like my husband would never. My husband would never talk to me like that. <laughs> hey y'all, I'm back for part two of uh She Shady. Episode one of Tia's new show, Tia's new act 2.0 was the first episode and this is the part two of it she said you see how he was talking to her you see how he talked to her that's what she was dealing with okay so if you haven't seen part one be sure to check it out and i forgot to change my banner october 11th is my birthday i celebrate all month thank you for those of you who have cash at me i'm gonna buy something i i buy stuff to remind me of you guys like bibles study tools or something boots or something so thank you for those of you's cash at me um if you've cash at me send me something for my birthday or have gotten my books or my membership please email me i'm gonna be liquid liquidating alexiful boutique and i want to make sure those of you who have supported and showed me love and support get the first dibs okay so email me if you sent me something for my birthday so that i can send you uh when it's ready the link for alexa for boutique okay thank you so much for your love and support be sure to check out episode my review of love is blind episode one two and three do not tell me anything about episode four and on i'm only on episode one two and three I started episode four just a second ago, so I'll come back and do a review for episode four. What I said, I think all of them have made wrong choices. I feel like this season is the season of wrong choices, okay? So let me get back to uh, Tia, a new show. This is the part two. If you didn't see part one, be sure to check out part two. So I left off where Tia was saying that she saw Corey on the red carpet and she felt like she needed to hug him and tell him it's it's going to be okay because he looks so uncomfortable and for 22 years they've been together he's never come to this event but the one time they're divorced here he comes and show up girl mm. i feel like tia shaded Corey throughout the whole uh episode and she's been feeding us Luda hints all along personally i feel like she's tired of being the breadwinner okay so she we left over she said tia uh said she got tired of not being authentic and living in her truth she got tired of showing up at events people thinking everything was uh perfect when it was not and went home being alone okay so right here she's saying that it was all fake you know she was putting on a face she was putting on a front she was not being authentic it was not she was not living in her truth and she basically well that's what happened right when you're being fake when you're not being authentic it's like holding a balloon underwater eventually you're gonna get tired of holding the balloon underwater and you just have to let it out and i think that's what happened it sounds as if corey became complacent in the marriage we just saw this here they are on camera it's on tape and look how he I mean, let me finish. Like, I, I mean, on camera, where millions of people's gonna watch this. So imagine what she's dealing, she was dealing with off of camera. A lot of husbands become complacent, and you cannot become complacent. One of the best advice my dad gave me and Big Mike is what he told mike whatever you did to get janice you have to do it to keep her and then some more and he told me whatever i did to attract him you need to do that and then some more in other words do not become complacent still take her out on dates still send her flowers i fix myself up for my husband yeah i fix myself up for myself too but not walking around looking funky smelling funky hair a mess you know what i mean fixing up yourself, making time for your husband. 
taking days off. Mike and I, we do not leave our kids at Daddy Sitters. Little Michael is nice. He's never been to a Daddy Sitter. I don't trust people with my children. Okay. I hardly talk, trust the teachers. She said, what's, what's she saying, Like, What's she saying? <laughs> okay. So to avoid leaving our kids at babysitters, um, we take maybe a half a day. So we have what we call Adam and Eve day. So we might take a day. My house is working from home most days anyways. And I'll just take a day and spend it home with him or a half a day, or I'll go to work late and have breakfast with him. And yesterday was my birthday. And my husband had to go into the city. Um, we went to breakfast. We had breakfast. He took me to Burlington to pick up a few things. He wrote, and then he went into the city. So we will take a couple of hours. Maybe it's just breakfast, right? And I can get to work at 1030. I could take an hour and a half, just me and him sit down at a diner. It's just me and him sitting down, talking, holding hands, touching each other, maybe sitting next to each other, because it is so important to take time for your mate, that no matter what happened, no matter how busy you get, no matter how many children you have, that you will not forsake your, your, your marriage. It's like our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, right? We get so tired, so busy doing this. We're doing everything else. We are in every board at church. We in every community, but we don't take time for our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Your marriage is the same. You must take time. Your marriage is like your body. You need to go to the doctors, like a dentist. You need to get your teeth checked, your eyes checked, your blood work, everything. And whatever is off, you need to make the adjustment. So it sounds like he became complacent. And, and another thing is, ladies, remember when you take care of a man and pay all the bills and you be the man, they become resentful. This right here is resentment. He resents her. He resents her. That's why he snapped at her like that. Because he's resentful towards her. That's what they do. They become resentful towards you, right? So then she said, her personality as a celebrity is like the girl next door with the white picket fence. And I'm like, well, who paid for the white picket fence? Did Corey pay for it? Or did you pay for it? The American dream is the husband buying the white picket fence. If he didn't buy the white picket fence, it's not American dream. It's an American nightmare. Okay, Tia. <laughs> she said, but what she didn't show was the reality, right? She has this personality, persona of the, the girl next door. But what she didn't show was the reality of what was going on in her marriage what was the reality of what was going on in your marriage, Tia? Tell us. We're trying to figure it out. She said what she didn't show was the reality of what was going on in her marriage. She was trying to live a fantasy. You can't live no fantasy with no broke man, Tia. You can't live no fantasy where you bought the white picket fence, you bought the house, you bought the couch, the rats, the roaches, the curtains, the rugs. When they got a divorce in their divorce decree, Tia said, I paid for everything. For those of you in the comments fighting with me, she said, I paid, I bought everything. Corey bought nothing. I bought the house. I bought the rug. I bought the bed. I bought the couch. I bought the forks, the spoons, the plates. The rats are mine. The roaches are mine. Everything is mine. The pool is mine. The grass is mine. I paid for everything. This is what Tia said. And remember at first, the neglect was trying to get alimony. Y'all remember that? The nigga was trying to get alimony and Tia had to pull out her prenup and say, ah, 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 ah. And that's when she said, I bought everything. I paid for everything. And when Corey left, Corey left with his clothes and his jewelry. So you've been married 14 years, you're getting a divorce, you're leaving the house, sir, you, you didn't even have a cup. You want to tell me you didn't even buy a cup? You couldn't even say, no, 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 I paid for that, that China set, I'm going to carry it with me. No, the neglect bought nothing. You know, for those of you fighting with me in the comments. 
She said she was trying to live a fantasy. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the living a fantasy. As a matter of fact, I think your marriage should be a fairy tale. I think your husband should be a prince, a knight in shining armor. But ladies, if you choose bombs, pookies, rarest, tyrones, and dusties, guess what? You will not live a fantasy. You will live a nightmare. And that's what it sounded like Tia was living. She said, and I quote, but what I didn't show was the reality of what was going on in marriage. And maybe I was trying to live a fantasy. I, and I think, sadly, a lot of women who marry potentials, you're living a fantasy. You're thinking one day he's going to change. One day he's going to become. And it never becomes because you should not have married him. If you're going to marry the man, marry him for who he is in front of you today, not who he's going to become one day, because the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. He might never become. Oh, and look at him now. He's arrived. No, he didn't. Tyler Perry gave him a show. Okay. Okay. He's gotten paid, Tyler Perry's paid him more for one show that he's gotten paid more in three months on a set. That's what he said. Okay, Tyler Perry, give him a show. Okay, let's see if Sony and Disney and all these big people is going to pick him up and make him a worldwide star like Will Smith, Denzel, uh, Martin. Y'all, that's, that's what y'all act like. Y'all act like Corey is, is Denzel. And Idra, uh, e, uh, what's his name? Is that one? Uh -huh. And and uh, uh, my uh, Will Smith and Martin. That's not who he is. But that's what y'all want to act like he's been. That's not who he is. You might go. And for those of you in the comments talking about she's jealous of him because he went and he did a show and made more money than he did. She did. Why y'all acting like that's not the fight of the black woman? Huh? Why y'all act like all of us, except for those of us who are unionized, are not fighting for fair pay? What's the girl that did the color purple? Oh my God, her name slipped. Taraji. Is a Taraji a worldwide star fighting for fear pay at her age? Huh? Did she not say, was it Taraji that says, <clears throat> Brad Pitt, I might have the name right. Brad Pitt got paid $10 million to do a show and she got paid 500 something thousand. Somebody said it. And I'm like, yeah, girl, but you're not Brad Pitt, boo. You're not Brad Pitt. So no, Tara I think it was Taraji or somebody else. You're not going to get $10 million because you're not Brad Pitt. You don't have Brad Pitt status. But y'all act like women are not fighting for fair pay. So yeah, they might have paid Corey more for a job than they would pay Tia but isn't that the fight of the black woman, especially Hollywood, trying to get fear pay? Why is Taraji still crying about she's not getting fear pay? Why y'all act like they don't pay men more than they pay women? They pay us 75 cents, but pay the men a dollar, except for unions, I think. Because in my union, no matter you a man or a woman, you're going to get the same pay. For a very long time, I got paid more than my supervisor because I've been there longer than she 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 was. Yeah, there's a lot of us on my job that are workers that we get paid more than our supervisors because we've been there longer. So when you've been there longer with raises and steps, you get paid more. I might be getting paid $100,000 and my supervisor's getting paid $80,000 because I've been there longer. So I had more time to, you know, 
build up where she just came in. She's just been there for seven years. Well, you're not going to get paid more than me because I've been there longer, even though you're my supervisor. I'm just using that as an example. So let's stop acting about she's jealous of Corey because Corey started getting money. No, Corey became resentful. That's what they do. When you take care of these men and provide for them and then they start getting a little coins, they get resentful towards you and they give you their asses to kiss because now they've arrived to where they should have been before you married them. Moving along because I need to go watch Love is Blind and take my afternoon nap. Mm hmm. OK. So then she says to uh, what's her name that she's never dated. She's right. She's never dated. She met Corey. He was living in the Roachmobile. She got with him and eventually she married him. And what we saw over here dating is for data, not because you meet a man and start going out with him and he's been your boyfriend means you're supposed to be with him and you're supposed to marry him. There's about data. So that means you can't collect data on more than one guy at the same time. And the reason why you don't meet a man and make him your boyfriend is because you might meet somebody else and he has a little bit more establishment than this one. Maybe you meet this man and he don't go to the dentist, but this man, he goes to the dentist to take care of his wealth and he can provide for you. So you don't need to stay, meet this man and stay with him and help him to become. I had a pick Misha in my comments this morning fighting me about a helper, that a helper, you're supposed to be a helpmate and helping with his vision and helping with his purpose and helping with whatever he's uh, he needs help with. How many of you know that is not the biblical definition of a helpmate? That is a pick Misha helpmate. You so desperate and thirsty for a man that you will take a tree and turn him into a man. You will go to Home Depot and get a blow up doll and blow life into him and speak life into him and command him to be a man because he's a Pygmatian. So when she's saying she's never dated, she's never dated. You don't know what you want. This is why dating is for data. You need to know what you want and based on what you want, you date, gather data on the men based on that. Moving along. So she says he was her first everything, met, uh, wasn't allowed to date till 18, met him at 20, lost her virginity at 25, got married, bam, there they then the kids. So then the young girl, I don't like her, Sierra wants to talk about dating because Tia has PTSD. And then the young, the, the girl Sierra brought out a build a meal. Okay. So I don't really, I don't know. I, I think you need to know what you like. Right. So the guys that Tia described is not Corey. <laughs> it ain't Corey. Because Corey is a little scrawny guy. Okay. He little scrawny. His lips black. Look like he stay home. Who said it in my comments and smoke weed all day, every day? That's how he looked. He always looked drunk. He always looked high. He always looked dirty. He just looked. Like one of them street dudes that stand around on the corner all day. That's how he looked. Just. But anyways, the guy that Tia did this around, it's not Corey. <laughs> okay. And, you know, she basically doesn't know what she like. And that's why, I'm, that's why it's, she needs to date. But I don't think Tia is ready to date. She needs to be alone. Tia needs to spend time alone, and Tia needs to get back to her first love, the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me explain something to you, ladies. This is why you need to be mindful and careful of who you marry, because I am sure that poor Tia has been praying and praying and praying, believing God that Corey is going to become the prince she thought he was going to become. And I think all of those things affect your faith in God. No, I am not putting Tia's response, faith, her relationship with God on Corey, but what I am saying is those things help you. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so she probably started reaching out. To... So she liked men who are funny. Yeah, because this one never smiles. He always looks high and drunk. He never, he always looks angry. <laughs> she likes a man who's funny, had a good time, tattoos, long hair. So she like dreads and thugs and all them. Well, Corey's a thug, girl. You want another thug? So then she says, here's an here's another shade. I think I'm going to come back and do all the shades. I have the bandwidth to date, but don't have time for the BS. She says, I'm successful. I have a business to run. I have kids. I have a mortgage. So if you're going to come, you need to come correct. 
If that is not shade, I don't know what it is. What is? Because Corey didn't come correct. <laughs> right? Corey had to save up years and years and years for the engagement ring. Years and years and years and years and years he took to save up $6,000 to buy an engagement ring. <clears throat> <clears throat> No, I'm not saying you should <clears throat> buy an engagement ring, heart and soul and spirit. That's not what I'm saying. I think it needs to be decent. I think 6000 is decent. But the fact that he took years and years to save it up, girl. Oh. <laughs> okay. What they said, engagement ring, I think whatever, I think it needs to be decent, right? My engagement ring was... I thought it was a month, girl. It was it was one paycheck. <laughs> one of my husband's paycheck. Remember, my husband's a hire. Okay, he don't make two dollars for this. <laughs> my husband's uh, my engagement ring cost what at that time one of my husband's paycheck. Net his net, not his gross. <clears throat> and then. With the upgrade, he upgraded because the, the 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 diamond wasn't what he liked. So he said he was going to change it out and put the diamond in that he liked, the ring he would have chosen, which is a uh, solitaire. I don't know where he was going with that because I don't like solitaires. You see my ring. Okay. <laughs> and so he changed it out. And the diamond he chose... Um, I think my engagement ring is now up to a gross of one of my husband paid check back then. Okay. Gross. Okay. There's a difference of gross in there. So, but I think it should be decent. I would not be comfortable with my husband paying three months of his income on an engagement ring. I just wouldn't be comfortable. But again, you know, my husband is a high earner, so in 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 three months, my husband make what most people make it a year. <laughs> so I'm just I'm just saying, it should be decent, <clears throat> and that's all I'm saying. It should be decent. It shouldn't be, you know, whatever. It just should be decent, and she should like it, and she should think it's nice, and she should think that he's thoughtful. And um, she should love her ring. That's all I'm saying. I don't think you have to break the bank. That's all I'm saying, okay? Um, so with her saying you got to come correct means Corey wasn't correct, okay? So then she's back with the video diary and she said, divorce is new and weird and it sucks. Yeah, it's, 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 yes, it is Tia. We, I, and I'm okay with you. I'm, I'm okay with you. It's a journey you have to go through. It's weird. Yeah. You've been with Corey since she was 18. It sucks. Yes, it does. But you have to get through this process, right? You have to get through it. <clears throat> she says she feels sad, doesn't want to be around anyone right now. She wants to stay home and stay in her feelings. So before it's, oh my God, I don't want to be alone. And then now it's, I don't want to be around anyone. And it's all okay to you. All I am hoping for is that you have a therapist helping you through this process. Because you need somebody to help you through it. This is not something you should be going through alone. You need somebody to talk you through it and help you through it. You need somebody to help you through it, Tia, girl. You need somebody, a counselor, somebody. And the little girl you got around you, Ciara, please keep her in the office. She should not be giving you dating advice, marriage advice, none of them advice. Because she's young and a dumb dumb. I'm talking about she's a healer.
All right. Excuse me. <clears throat> so then Tia and Nat uh, Sierra and, and Natasha plan a healing party for her. Again, if you didn't watch my other videos, it's going to take her seven years to get over Corey. For those of you saying why you're still crying. Seven years, girl. She's going to cry for seven years. Uh, it's going to take some while. It, it, she can speed up the process with counseling, but about seven years. So get ready for her to cry some more and talk about Corey more. Okay. So then we see her beautiful house that she bought with her money. That the homeless man was living in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Her house is gorgeous. Oh my God. I love the upstairs. How the upstairs is like, you can see down in the living room. I don't know if I like that. It's that open concept thingy. I don't know if I like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. So then uh, the makeup team arrive and... While she's getting glam, her Google alerts goes off. And I'm like, Tia, this is why you need a therapist, baby. You need you need to turn off the Google alerts. So basically, the Google alert is every time her name comes up or Corey, it alerts her. No wonder she's mentally ill by her own confession. And it's a picture of her hugging a man, and it was her manager. <clears throat> so she comes down. Uh, uh, for the party, she looks absolutely beautiful. She in her white, I love her hair. And uh, I didn't realize how flat Tia is, she got no ass. Mm. Uh, you know how they say Tia is the black twin and Tamir is the white twin, but apparently Tamir got the black body and Tia got the white body. <laughs> Okay, okay, going fine. I'm being petty. <laughs> I can't hear you. Oh my God, because Jess, you're so petty. I'm like, I know, girl. Meow. That's why I wore my shirt. Meow. <laughs> okay. So one of the girls br brought her a fake dingling, and she's like, what is that? And the friend is like, you know what it is. <laughs> for Tia, two point for a fake dingling for Tia points for her. Okay. Uh... In her speeches, there was time she didn't think she could uh, make it. And I, 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 I guess I can imagine, all right, after being with somebody for, uh, for 22 years. And uh, uh, Ciara gets a medium, jazz, jazz. And I'm like, but Tia, wasn't you raised in a Christian home? Are you not a Christian? But then I hear her, she's burning for sage phase, whatever. Mm. I, I want to know what happened to your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, Tia. No wonder Tamara wouldn't let you watch her kids if she dies. I wouldn't let you watch mine either. Mm -hmm. And so the whole purpose of it is to bring her back. So apparently Tia wants more kids and Taz brought her a bag that has three kids. And then Taz, Taz Jazz joked with her and said, you could meet somebody, have another baby. And I'm like, the girl's 46. Okay, she's 46. I'm not saying it can't happen, but Tia, you don't need to have any more kids. Be happy with Cairo and Ciara, whoever the baby name is. Just be happy with those two, okay? So then Jazz, Taz, the medium says, I see your grandmother, grandpa, grandpa, and they're, uh, they're giving her a hug. Okay, so let me explain this to you. So if you don't want to hear what really is with your dead relatives that you claim you're seeing, you know, like that other lady talking about she went in the room and her grandma was in there talking to her, play with her. It is a familiar spirit. It is not of God. It is demonic. I'm not saying you can't dream of your loved ones, right? I dream about my, my grandmother sometimes, but I'm talking about seeing them in the room or they're here hugging you. No, they're not. It's a familiar spirit. <clears throat> when your loved one dies, they either go to heaven or they go to hell. They can't come out. They can't come down and they can't come out of hell. What the enemy does is he brings out familiar spirit. Those are demonic spirits that's been in your family for generations who can take on 
the familiarity and the spirit of your dead loved ones, your grandma, your grandfather, your uncle. And so that's what these mediums are seeing. Remember, mediums or, or psychics, they it's the same gift as prophecy. That is why the line between the prophetic and psychic is thin. You can't see, it's very thin because it's the same gift. The psychic, the prophet, it's the same gift. The only difference is how they choose to use it. Prophet speaks for God, psychic speaks for the enemy. That's the only difference. It's the same gift. It's like singing. It's the same gift from the same source. How do you use it for God or for the devil? Self. And yes, you know, I love music, girl. I love music, honey. I love me some music, honey. I love to dance. Okay. So the psychic who needs to repent or else she will die and all psychics will die and you will burn in hell and go to hell if you do not repent of your false doctrine and repent of your sins, turn from your wicked ways and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. You will die and in hell you will lift up your eyes. Repent to the day of salvation. So the psychic talked about the familiar spirits and her dead grandmother says a few years into the marriage, she realized she made a mistake. I've been told y'all that. Now, remember, it's the familiar spirits that's talking. So the familiar spirit was there if that really did happen when, when Tia told her grandmother, yeah, a few years in my marriage, I made a mistake. That familiar spirit is there and picked that up and is able to translate that to the psychic. That's what that is. So I've been said Tia shouldn't have married Corey. I've always said I have never thought they would make a good couple or they was going to last. I just knew it was going to come. It's, it's they going to get a divorce sooner than later. Okay. And so if you saw Tia, she was like, yeah, a few years in the marriage. Because after a few years, you're thinking he's going to hit it big and he ain't hitting it big. Mm -hmm. A mistake. So then she says, and I shook my head and I said, yes, because this is, this is what the naked wife does, right? Taz says, you were so optimistic that you could raise a family together and heal as a couple that she forsake everything that was presenting to her that she had to make a change and she sacrificed. And her grandmother said, today is the day of rebirth. I believe every word that demon said. <laughs> Remember, it's a familiar spirit. It's not really your grandmother talking. It's the familiar spirit that's been in the bloodline that knows everything. <clears throat> because what she said is what? delusional women do, right? You marry these potential men, the naked wives, and you marry them because you were so optimistic that you could raise a family together and heal as a couple that she forsake, that you forsake everything that was presenting to you. He ain't got no job, you forsake. He can't keep a job, you forsake. He can't make no money, you don't listen. He can't keep it in the pants. Da, da, da. You forsake everything that was presented to, to you that, that you needed to make a change. And you sacrificed you, your happiness, your contentment to stay in the marriage. And grandma is saying today's the day of the rebirth. And Tia said, when her grandmother died, and they put her in the grave, she realized that she had to go to therapy. So was she going to therapy because the marriage was not working, because she needed to get out of the marriage, because she realized she couldn't stay in the marriage no more? What was going on? So remember in my first video, I said, 
wives contemplate divorce years before they actually file. And right here, she said, when her grandmother died, they put her in the grave. She realized she had to go to therapy and wasn't going to continue to live the way she's been living. That is what she said. When they put my grandmother in the grave, I realized I had to go to therapy because I could not continue to live the way I was living. Tia, how was you living, girl? We want to know. How was you living, Tia? How was you living? Mm hmm And then Taz says, there's no race. There's no rush. Focus on your kids. Focus on kids. And that's what Tia needs to do. Tia don't even need to be dating right now. There's no rush to meet somebody. There's no rush to get married again. Focus on yourself, Tia. Self-healing. Go to therapy. I don't know if she's still in therapy. She said she realized she had to go to therapy and focus on the kids. And then she says when someone comes into her life, she will, they will tick certain boxes because this time she's not settling. And I've said it. Tia settled. Tia settled for Corey. She settled for him. And Taz is right in that when the right person comes, they will check the boxes off. He can provide for me. No, he can't. Bye. This is why it's important, ladies, for you to know what it is that you like and what it is you want in a husband. Because when they, you come, you'll be able to check the box. Because a husband is a choice. You don't have to marry the first man that's presented to you. Dating is for data. And Tia says, yes. She said, yes. She settled. She settled for him. So then, and oh, she said, uh, because now you know her wor your worth. Yeah, because she didn't know her worth. At 18 and 20, you don't know your, your worth, child. Okay? That's why teaching is important. So then there was the letting go ceremony. They had to write down uh, stuff on a paper or tangible, let it go and burn it. And then Sierra runs upstairs and get the girl multi-million dollar gown. Talk about she go throw it in the fire. So how, what you think about letting this go? Are you crazy? She, her daughter could wear the gown or she could repurpose it. And she says, no, my gown. No, I had somebody make this for me. Okay. Even Natasha said the dress thing was too much fun. That's why I told her, you need to get Ciara away from me. She's a young dumb dumb. No, we're not going to burn this multi-million dollar dress. <laughs> this thousands of dollar dress that she got made for her. And she said, you know what? That day was beautiful. Yeah, your day was beautiful. But your life was about to be a nightmare, girl. Because you married a man who couldn't buy a fence. <laughs> okay. He couldn't buy a fence. So I think I'm going to come back and do a video of all the shady stuff Tia said about Corey. Because I'm like, girl, that is shady. She settled. She didn't know her worth. She didn't know she had choices. A husband is a choice, dear. All right. I love you. I adore you. I'm about to go lay on the couch for a couple more hours and finish Love is Blind. Come on back and check out Love is Blind. Comment below. Let me know what you think. Absolutely love you. Absolutely adore you. It's my birthday. I celebrate all month. Thanks for those of you who show me love and support and cash at me. Uh, email me because I'm going to create a list that I can email out to you. Thank you. Mwah. Talk to you later. Bye.